Warden is a Ruby gem which allows you to do authentication through Rack Middleware. Now normally when I do authentication from scratch, I do it all within the Rails application, but there are several advantages to going through Warden. One being is that you can access the authentication through other Rack apps such as Mountable Engines, and you can also access it outside of the controller such as in Routing Constraints. But I'll show you how to do that at the end of this episode. First, let's see what's involved in adding Warden to a Rails app. So here's the application we'll be working with, and notice I already have some authentication set up here. I have a sign up form where the user can create a new user record, and a login form where they can log in if they are already signed up. As long as the credentials match, then it logs them in successfully. Now currently, this authentication is managed all inside of the Rails application, but here I want to move this out into Warden. But first, let's take a look at the code and see what we have so far. So here's what that user model currently looks like. It's very simple. The key line here is has secure password, which is new in Rails 3.1. It basically just hashes a password into a field called password digest. And I covered this in more detail in episode 270. Now most of the authentication logic takes place inside of the sessions controller here, and inside of the create action here, which I first just find the user based off of the email the user typed in. I call authenticate, which is supplied by that has secure password method, uh, given the password, and then set the user session ID if that succeeds, and return to the home page. If it fails, I just report an error message and render out the form again. And logging out is similar, it just clears out the user ID and goes back to the home page. As you can see, very simple authentication here. If you want more information about this, check out episode 250 where I show you how to create the authentication from scratch. But here, uh, let's move this into Warden. Now most of the documentation for Warden can be found on the GitHub Wiki here. And a good place to start is the setup page. And it shows you here how to add Warden as Rack Middleware. So that's what we'll do first using this Warden Manager. So first, I'll add Warden to the gem file of this application here, just gem Warden. Now it's a good time to point out that there's another gem called Warden Rails, which adds some conveniences, but I don't really find to be necessary, and I think you'll get a better idea of how Warden works by using it directly. Now make sure to run the bundle command to install the gem. Then once you do that, we can add some Rack Middleware through an initializer. So I'll make a new file here called uh, warden.rb. Now to get us started, I'll just paste in some code here. And the first thing that this does is add Warden Manager to our Rack Middleware in our Rails app. Now this is just like the documentation showed, and what we do is add a default strategy called Password. Now Warden doesn't come with a built-in password strategy, it's up to us to write it. And we can name it anything we want, this is just arbitrary. So I'll get to writing that in a minute. And the rest of this code here just tells Warden how to store the user model in the session. You can see we just want to store the user ID, and then to fetch the user back out again, we just call user find on that ID. Now we still need to define this password strategy, so I'll do that next here. We can call warden strategies, and then dot add, and then pass in the name that we want to make, such as password, and then pass in a block. Now there's one method that we need to define in here called authenticate with a bang at the end, and then we need to uh, authenticate the user based off of user request parameters, just like we do inside of the sessions controller. So you can see that code inside of the create action of the sessions controller, and since it's roughly the same, I'm just going to copy and paste this code into this authenticate method here. Now there are a few things we need to change in here, starting with the params hash here. Uh, we are currently using symbols, but in the uh, rack app here, you need to use a string. So let's do that. And then when authentication succeeds, what we can do is just call success with a bang and then pass in the user object. And then when it fails, we just call fail and then pass in a message stating why it failed, in this case, invalid email or password. Now we also need to change our sessions controller here to use Warden for authentication. So at any time we can access Warden through the Rack environment by calling that and it's just called Warden. And then you can call methods on this such as authenticate and this will either return the user object if it authenticated or return nil. So what we could do is just set our user to this result and then if our user was found, then say we're logged in, otherwise display the error message and we can access the uh, warden error message here that was on the failure by calling message on this. And we should also use warden for handling logging out. And so for that, I'll just uh, call logout on warden directly like this. All right, now let's try this out. I'll fill in my login form here. And if I enter in a bad password, 
try to log in, it's going to say invalid email or password. But if I enter in the proper password, click log in, then it's going to say logged in. So that works. However, it's not showing up that we are logged in, and that's because it's not detecting the current user properly. So if you check out the application controller here, you can see we have a current user method. And it's trying to find the current user based off of the session user ID. But we don't want to do this anymore. Instead, we want to uh, authenticate through Warden. So let's call environment Warden and just call user on this, and that will return the currently found user through Warden. Now, it's getting a little bit cumbersome to always refer to Warden through the Rack environment here, so it would be more convenient if we just had a method on our controller called Warden that we could just call. So let me add that method here, and that just goes through that environment. And then we can use this method in all of our other controllers as well, such as our Sessions controller here. Every time we're referring to Warden, we could just call Warden directly inside of here. Now, when I reload this page here, it's now going to report me logged in because it's now going through Warden. Yay! Now, there is one more place that I'm referring to the old type of authentication, and that is inside of the user's controller create action where the user signs up. When that happens, it's a good practice to log the user in, and I'm just doing so by setting the session user ID. But of course, that won't work anymore, so I need to set, set uh, the Warden set user and then just pass in that user object, and that will do the same thing, logging in the user when they sign up. All right, so now our app is using Warden for all the authentication, and it was quite easy to do. But there are a few things we could do to improve it. One good thing to add is called a failure app, and we could do that inside of the Warden Manager middleware block here. We can call manager.failureapp equals, and this accepts a Rack application that will get triggered when authentication fails. Now in Rails 3, every controller action can act as a Rack app, so we can call sessions controller dot action and then fetch the new action because that's where we want it to go when authentication fails. And that way it will just trigger that action and display it for our failure. Now, however, there is a problem with this and that is in development mode, this will be cached and it won't reload automatically. So instead, I think it's better to go through a Lambda here. So we can just pass in a Lambda, uh, pass in our environment hash, and then pass call onto here, passing in the environment and closing the Lambda. So that way it will only call this dynamically and it will reload automatically in development. And then we can take advantage of this new approach inside of the sessions controller here where we're doing our authentication. If we call authenticate with a bang, it's going to trigger that failure app whenever fail, uh, the authentication fails. So this means we can simplify this quite a bit and just simply redirect it immediately afterwards. Now we do have to modify our new action as well to accept that uh, flash message here. So we could just paste this in and only call warden message if uh, the warden message is present here. So now what will happen is that if the authentication fails here, it's going to trigger this new action because this is what we set up as a failure app and then display the flash message if it's present. And we could try this out and see if it works. By the way, don't forget to restart your Rails app whenever we're changing the uh, initializer. So let's put in a bad password here and then see if that works. And it says invalid email and password. If we enter in the proper password here, type login, then it works properly. So that's working, has the same effect, but it's a little bit simpler in going through Warden's failure app. So the advantage of this is that no matter where we call the authentication, it could be in maybe a mountable engine, it's going to trigger the failure app if authentication fails and behave properly like we want it to. Now, another thing that's a good practice to add is a valid method on any Warden strategies you make. So let's define a method here called valid. And this should return true or false depending on whether or not it should try to do the authentication. So we want uh, it only to try to perform the authentication if there is an email parameter and a password parameter present. So that way it won't try to uh, do this authentication inside of the strategy if those aren't present. Now the advantage of this is primarily when you have multiple strategies because you can list multiple strategies here. For example, we could say our password is going to be the first strategy, but maybe we want an API key as an alternative strategy that we make. And this could just take a token and then just check that it matches a given user. And the way this could work is uh, when they call authenticate, it's going to first check the password strategy here, see if it's valid. If it is, it's going to try to authenticate through that. If it's not valid or if the authentication fails, it's going to go on to try the API key strategy. So you could have many different kinds of strategies here. You could have HTTP basic, maybe an OmniAuth strategy, just any kind of authentication that your application needs to support.
Now, if you want to see examples of different Warden strategies, I recommend you check out Devise because it uses Warden internally and has several different strategies you can check out here. One in particular is pretty interesting is the Rememberable strategy, which handles Remember Me functionality. Now this uses cookies inside of a strategy, so if you need to do that, I recommend you check out the Warden compatibility file inside of Devise here, because it shows you how to define a cookies method using uh, Action Dispatch making a new request object here. Pretty neat stuff here, and there's a lot to learn by browsing the code. So now that we have Warden all set up, let me show you an example of using it outside of a Rails controller, in this case as a constraint in our routes here. Notice I have a couple routes here, sign up and login, and let's say I don't want these to be accessible to users who are already logged in. So what I could do is add a constraint here. So it's a scope and set the constraints to, uh, let's do a Lambda block, and that will take a request object. And so we can fetch the environment warden object inside of here and fetch the user object in here. And if this is nil, then we want to allow them access to these pages and otherwise it won't even show up inside of our routes. So now let's try this out. I'm currently not logged in, so I'm able to access that login page here, but after I log in here with the proper username and password, once I'm logged in and I try to access that login page directly, notice I get a routing error saying there's no route that matches. Now, this probably isn't something you'd wanna do because it's a poor user experience, but it's just an example of how you can use authentication outside of a Rails controller. It's generally a better idea anyway to manage this from controller before filters because if there are multiple routes pointing to the same thing, such as sessions slash new, notice I'm able to access here because it only cut off the route and not the actual controller action. But this is just an example. There are more complex scenarios where you're juggling multiple rack apps where this kind of thing is a lot more useful. Well, that's it for this episode on Warden. So if you need to make your authentication available outside of your Rails controllers, Warden is a great way to go.